Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to all the representatives of the press, uh, dear students, children, teachers, parents, for all those who listen to us. We are at the end of the third week after having uh, worked together to uh, become comfortable in this new situation parents, students, teachers, we talk about home uh, education, but we know that this cannot be compared with regular schooling, but everybody did an effort to make the most of this uh, unusual situation. We were successful thanks to uh, an effort enormous effort of all the players. Thanks uh, to all of you, teachers, uh, students, parents, for their commitment and flexibility that they showed over the last three weeks. It would not have been possible without all of you. One important item, we managed to work together over the three past weeks. In this crisis, uh, we uh, work together and uh, we want to uh, make sure our children do not suffer any damage and uh, get over this crisis. And this is possible by working together because alone nobody can advance. We can learn from each other, we can exchange we can come uh, to our objective, reach our objective, that is that we can conclude our academic year and that the uh, pupils, the students, will be able to start the next school year with enthusiasm. I felt uh, this approach during all the conversations I had with uh, directors of the different schools uh, with the representatives of the unions, of the teachers, uh, but also from the parents. Everybody uh, uh, tries to do its utmost uh, to uh, overcome this complex situation. And uh, I received this same message from lots of concerned people, from the students, the p their parents, their teachers, the situation is complex and everybody had to get adapted, but there is this willingness to contribute and to make the most of it. One other item that we have to focus on due to the experience of the last three weeks, we have to uh, show uh, understanding for each other. There are different uh, life situations concerning students, parents, uh, and teachers. There is a difference in different uh, households. Sometimes uh, the dad or mom works in home office from remotely. Sometimes there are children, three children at home in different uh, classes with three different uh, educational programs. Then uh, these parents have to do their work in parallel but there are also parents where it is easier. Parents who do not work, uh, they have maybe only one child to care for, to attend to. And uh, for the teachers, this is the same. There are different uh, situations. Some teachers have own children to attend to. That is a different challenge than if uh, you can fully concentrate on uh, your pupils. Therefore, uh, uh, continued learning is only possible if we get adapted to the different uh, life situations. Let's also consider uh, one thing, and that was not very often the case so far, but it could be the case over the next weeks. There are also parents, pupils, and teachers who may get ill, and maybe they will be separated uh, so as not uh, to spread the, the, the virus. 
it might be possible that a different uh, teacher uh, will do a replacement and uh, without knowing what the program was. So um, we have to be confident and make the most of the future. So everything that we can do no, in normal school uh, conditions, we cannot uh, achieve it uh, now. It is important to make sure uh, we use the time uh, in an appropriate way. Third item, we noticed how important new technologies helped us in this crisis situation. For many players, be it parents, students, uh, teachers, they could get used to these uh, electronic devices that are very different. So this was to uh, get the communication uh, flowing between parents, uh, teachers, students, teachers, so that they all could uh, discuss together. And some people uh, learned how to use uh, one or the other means, electronic means. And this comes uh, is uh, merged with uh, ped pedagogical measures. So uh, let's imagine what would we have done uh, if uh, there would have been a crisis like coronavirus 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we would not have had this same technological means. So uh, we noticed that the classes and uh, pupils who have already used this technological means previously, uh, they have actually an advance. For them, it's more like a continuity of their normal uh, uh, work. We really noticed over the three last weeks that uh, some people really made a great progress and discovered this uh, means of digital learning. Therefore, I am convinced when everything will be back to normal and will be back to school, this knowledge will not be lost. One work uh, regarding a survey that uh, we did very spontaneously over the, n the last weeks or days, over the last days, we received 17,000 uh, answers from parents and teachers, and they are rather positive. So after some uh, difficulties in the beginning, say most of them, after three weeks, nine out of 10 parents and teachers also, they feel uh, confident in this situation. They uh, found uh, methods to get adapted and they want to continue. We have over 7,000 individual recommendations that we are analyzing and categorizing for the moment. Uh, so that we can see where the problems, the issues are, and uh, let this flow into our, our own thinking and uh, uh, inform the teachers about it, and maybe even uh, elaborate uh, specific programs. And uh, I'm going to talk about this later. Thank you anyway for this large participation in this survey. There also, we noticed that there was a collaboration during this crisis. Uh, most uh, teachers do, did not work alone with their class, but they worked together with other teachers. It's even uh, uh, more largely spread in the primary school. But we see that teachers get together, uh, they uh, break down the work, each one does part of it, and then uh, we progress uh, in a better condition. So there also we could see that it all depends on the life situations of parents and teachers. Uh, time is one of the major issues, uh, especially for people who feel not at ease and who feel not uh, that they are up to the expectations. So sometimes it's difficult uh, to uh, ensure the surveillance of the, the children of uh, and the pupils. Uh, among the teachers, almost 100% uh, 
of the teachers use the new technologies. So that is a very uh, important basis now. Uh, so as uh, in the future, we can uh, uh, overcome the coming problems. You know that yesterday the government decided that schools should be closed until 4th May because of the sanitary situation, of course. And this uh, crisis does not allow us uh, to return to school in a fortnight. The same is for uh, care facilities, music schools, university, etc. We would have wished the contrary and uh, me first. Even the uh, pupils, most of them would have liked to get back to school. Yesterday, uh, when I talked to my own children, uh, it was difficult for me to convince them that there was no uh, immediate return to school, that the suspension would last. There was a deception. And you know, in general, uh, pupils are happy to have a free day, but most of them, uh, they are a bit fed up uh, with the situation now. So we do this effort in order to guarantee the stability of our health situations. Uh, the health is a priority. Everybody has to take over their own responsibility uh, for the health and also for the more uh, vulnerable people who are more in danger. And it's not only the elderly and uh, uh, ill people, it's also younger people can uh, fall victims of this virus. Let me point out that even if we decided uh, to suspend school uh, until 4th May, so the remote schooling uh, will continue. But please consider also that over the two next weeks, we have the Easter break. It's not the same as previously, the previous years. But after three uh, weeks of homeschooling, we uh, deserve also a break. Parents, uh, teachers, uh, pupils, they should have some fresh air and make it great. And it's important to make something different, a holiday program during this fortnight. Even though we cannot go out, we cannot go uh, abroad, we cannot do uh, what you have imagined for a holiday. It is important uh, that we give uh, the possibility to our uh, youngsters uh, and children uh, to uh, get some leisure time. It's also important that they have uh, social contacts. It is also important for us adults, but it's still more important for uh, the children who miss uh, their, their friends uh, that they know from the playgrounds, from the school, their family, uh, their mates from the associations. And I believe it's important that children use the communication platforms that we put in place uh, for education. So they might use this platform to have contact with other children outside of the family, because that is, they are missing that. After three weeks of intensive learning at home, everybody deserves this break. So there should be no school program over the next uh, two weeks. But the challenge will be uh, to put in place a holiday program. So we can give some inspirations to parents. We can give uh, some advice. And you can find some advice on uh, school at home, uh, Kana at home kana.com and through smg.lu, so that's the National Youth Service. They offer a large program that children can do at home and where they can participate in. So the lockdown, of course, uh, has been defined until the, third, the 4th of May, and it's a new uh, challenge for all of us, even if it went well so far. 
everybody got adapted to the situation. But even though we cannot say uh, it will continue, it will simply continue after the Easter break, we have to find a clear ambition that we should take very seriously. Uh, despite any difficulties, we want to master the situation and uh, finish, achieve these school years. We want to guarantee that our students can uh, study next year. We want our pupils to be ready uh, to start class in next September. We don't want them to suffer a sustainable disadvantage. That's the reason why we made uh, an uh, array of uh, decisions. And the most important ones I'm going to tell you now. We decided that the contents, the learning program, uh, we should limit it to uh, the essential so that the pupils can be ready to start a class in September in the next class. So we will make sure that not the whole program has to be achieved. And that's for primary and uh, secondary school. So we only define the most important school matters. This is also the same for apprenticeships. So actually it's the teachers uh, who have uh, the final word, they have to discuss this over with their colleagues because it depends on what the uh, pupils already learned, what uh, program, uh, what uh, subject matter they have already learned. So it is up to the teachers to see what was uh, already handled and, not, and what wasn't. So the decision is the, the teachers. So this, the different teachers can maybe come together and uh, make that decision. So, uh, but uh, the uh, program should be reduced, and that's the directive here. So the purpose is that we can uh, ensure a continuity of the program next year. So we actually focused on this uh, subject matters and we will do that in the coming weeks after the Easter break. So we are also going to pursue this in uh, the future and even once uh, there will be uh, the restart of the school, we have to focus on the essential subject matters. And should we notice in June, July, that there is still some margin for some contents, then we could handle that at that moment. Another decision that was taken is that you know that most schools have three quarters. Now, as uh, lots of weeks have already been suppressed, we are going to merge the second and third quarter and uh, have we're going to have two semesters. The one is the, uh, from September to December, uh, and the second one uh, be from January to the uh, holidays, so the summer holidays, that will be the second semester. So, and uh, we'll uh, make sure that 50% uh, will be taken account of, 50% of the average marks will be taken into account for each uh, semester. This mechanism we are putting in place to reorganize the school and also this uh, pedagogical uh, methods that we use uh, so as uh, to uh, teach the contents to the pupils this is for a scenario where we would start again, open classes again on 4th May. But we uh, don't know uh, what uh, the future holds for us. So we also uh, defined a scenario uh, that uh, would uh, be in place should uh, the school uh, be suspended until uh, the next uh, break. 
if that should that not be the case, we have to review the mechanism, of course, again, and uh, maybe make the, the necessary adjustments. So today the situation will uh, stop and uh, school, school will start again. Uh, then uh, we have also to teach actually uh, the matters that we have uh, have not been taught so far. And maybe at that point, the teachers will see uh, what kind of subjects uh, were simulated and what was not. So after uh, the school start again, assessments of the pupils will be done. And there we will be make a distinctions. On one hand, we have the language, just the math and speci uh, specialty main classes. For those, we say, as far as we teach by e-learning, we make an assessment that's kind of a training assessment. It is a test just used to give a feedback to the pupil where they can have some progress. Uh, so concerning the assessments that uh, will be uh, end up in a certificate, that will only be done at school when school has restarted again. For the uh, remaining subject matters, we ask the teachers to give a project to be done to the students. So the students will have the possibility to have one subject and one project that they can do at home. And this should be assessed the first week after school start. But after one week uh, of uh, uh, students and teachers being together, so that in these subject matters, we can then uh, conclude uh, the marks. And that will give us time uh, to uh, work more in our main matters, uh, math and languages. And so the necessary assessments will be done. Because we want to make sure that the essential subject matters have been treated so that we can do uh, termination of the year and we can uh, see if the students were successful or not. So this forced break uh, that was given to us uh, has some consequences. Some teachers or teachers may feel uh, that uh, they lack an opportunity here because uh, normally the uh, marks in the first uh, quarter are uh, weaker than uh, the, the marks that come after. After Eastern, in general, uh, students, they uh, do a special effort to have better marks. And this is an opportunity that we don't want to take from the, te from the students even though it's not possible to make the exams immediately after Easter. So we want to give an additional opportunity to uh, the pupil, not by an additional exam, because we have no idea when this could be started and under which circumstances this would be too stressful. Therefore, we have given the opportunity uh, so that the student, if uh, they have a bad mark, they can actually uh, suppress this mark. So that will be the rule that will uh, be applied for pupils from uh, the seventh class to the second class. Uh, one uh, word uh, for the premier, so the sixth form class, what happens to them, to those uh, students of the last year of secondary school who has to get prepared for their exams? We tried to give them directives over the last weeks that have already been implemented. It is uh, very important to know that in the exams, we can only uh, assess uh, subject matters that were taught before the school's suspension. So we made actually a survey at the teachers, with the teachers, and so uh, the school year that uh, was done up to the third, 13th uh, March 
uh, we have to know that there was a different subject matter seen by different schools. So there has uh, is a commissions. Commission had al has already studied this, and they tried to define the subject matter that was already seen by the different uh, schools. So there are questionnaires uh, put in place for the moment for the exams. So the, tr the children and the uh, students will know from uh, Monday uh, what subject matter they have to study. And they will see uh, how these uh, questionnaires will be established. There also will be another recourse. Uh, to be sure, if pupils who look at uh, the exams, uh, the day of the exam, who see the questions, uh, we will give them the choice between two questions. And that is due to the fact in one school, uh, one subject matter will have been handled before and uh, in other school might be different. So the pupil during the exam will have the possibility to answer uh, one or the other question. So that gives good conditions for the students. I also want to stress, as far as we see the situation today, and should it not get worse, the exam of Premiere, so the six forms exams, will take place in within the buildings. Even if we are still under lockdown, this uh, school buildings, they are empty and we will have enough space and enough teachers uh, to uh, make sure that we can respect uh, the necessary sanitary conditions and uh, the uh, students can sit the exams. That will start on 25th May for the uh, last year students. Another question for those students, how do you calculate the average the yearly mark? Previously, I talked about this model for a seventh to second year. It's a bit different for the last year. Uh, there is, uh, there's only four weeks uh, course class left. Uh, two were already suppressed. There's not much time left uh, to make exams. Therefore, for the last year students, uh, we allow them for the annual uh, average so, so for the average, they can have the average of first semester. So from September to uh, Christmas, that is one possibility that they can take, but they can also opt for an average from uh, first uh, and second semester, knowing that uh, for the second uh, semester, the student can uh, increase their average by doing an additional exam. It's an additional opportunity for those students who want to uh, better their marks because they could not do exams or tests during the last weeks and better their notes during that time. So therefore, all the students uh, that currently not know what will be the consequences of the corona to their studies, uh, we put everything in place that there will be no disadvantage for students. If there is any doubt, we will give uh, an additional chance, additional uh, exam, or we will suppress one or the other mark. We will do our utmost to make sure everybody has fair opportunities to uh, succeed in the exams and get a good average mark. So because there was no class uh, taught during the last week, and we don't even know if uh, the pupils of the last year will go back to school before the exams. We want to make sure they are well prepared uh, to enter uh, university in September. And therefore, we, uh, the idea is that they do their examination, they sit their examinations now. And if they know already what kind of uh, uh, subject matter they are going to teach in September, we will uh, put teachers at their disposal 
during the summer holidays uh, to uh, have uh, contact with teachers so that they can uh, look over new uh, of the, over the subject matter to be sure they know the uh, subject matter. So there should be no disadvantage for uh, the, these uh, pupils. They should get the uh, diploma on time, and therefore we will not uh, move our schedule, even though we know that there are discussions in the different uh, between the different universities on international level to maybe extend the registration dates at universities. But we want to make sure that on a timely basis uh, the young students uh, will receive uh, their diploma. The same principles that I have just described now for the general and classical system, the same principles are valid for uh, apprenticeships, for professional uh, vocational training. We want to make sure that all apprentices finish their year and get diplomas, and therefore we also reduce the contents uh, to uh, the most ne necessary. And we have a commission working on uh, the contents of these uh, apprenticeships. There is also uh, material available online. And we say that should an apprentice uh, not be able to make something, for instance, not be able to do their internship, then uh, they would be expensive exempted. So should they uh, have done an uh, apprentice, uh, uh, sorry, an internship for their year, this will be uh, suppressed. If they uh, succeeded in the matters that was seen so far, uh, it will be seen as enough. We also continue to make the evalua evaluation, the assessment, that they have to, of course, to uh, succeed uh, their final exams once the school has started again, to get a certificate. So, and we are not going to take into account uh, for the examinations of the contents uh, of the last semester, but uh, to test the students, we look at the subject matters that was taught in the first semester and previously. So we make sure that the exams will maybe not be during three days, but uh, during a shorter period. And we discuss uh, with the professional chambers who support uh, our decisions. So even though, though the surveys were quite optimistic, and we showed that we can handle this difficult situation and make the most of it. Nevertheless, there are some items that do worry me. And I also noticed during the survey that some teachers had the same worries that I have. And we therefore we need to react to this. Because we could not actually reach all uh, teachers all, sorry, pupils and parents. It might be that this is due to uh, our connections, internet connections, or to uh, PCs, etc. It might also be due to the fact that they cannot learn uh, in an autonomous way. It can be that they have not uh, the correct uh, framework at home to learn uh, in an appropriate situation. And they're also uh, students who have uh, special needs. This is also normally, in normal circumstances, it, it is a challenge, but in these uh, circumstances, uh, when a pupil has to do an apprenticeship, is very difficult. Therefore, we have uh, put in place new measures for after the Easter break, and it is especially uh, to help uh, more vulnerable students and to make sure that we can reach all the pupils. And 
especially we uh, endeavor to uh, reach the students who have not the correct framework at home to study correctly. So it's our uh, duty to do everything to get in contact with these students so that they should not be uh, left behind. So this is why after Easter, when school will start again, we uh, will uh, uh, have a, a special team who will actually uh, make sure to contact the families and the students that had not uh, responded so far. So and we want to make sure that there will be a collaboration and uh, the same measure will be set taken in the secondary schools. And it is only in very exceptional cases, I stress it, we are going to offer schooling within the school. And that's only for students where we see it's not possible to do e-learning. And that's only uh, if necessary and under uh, strict sanitary conditions, of course. So we are not going to make classes, but we will create a context, a framework where uh, pupils can be in contact with their teachers to follow the normal program. For uh, pupils with special needs that were followed uh, by a special competent team, there will also be a continuity that will, of course, be adapted to their needs. These pupils and contacts will be contacted and will have regular contact and will be accompanied by the teachers. And there it's very important to have this physical contact between a parent or a skewed pupil, and that is not possible, then we have other means. At this occasion, let me stress that even if we see that we cannot reach all students, I have to say that even if the schools are closed, uh, class is going on and class is compulsory and you need uh, to work for school. And if you do not collaborate for school, that if that is as if in normal circumstances you would miss school. And you have to know that this will bring about consequences, consequences for uh, pupils and parents if they keep uh, absence and do not react uh, to school communications from teachers. Once uh, class will start again, whenever it may be, we make sure that those pupils that are not very uh, well uh, uh, accompanied and who were not able to, to learn uh, in depth, we will put them, uh, give them uh, additional uh, support in the different schools so that they can receive this support uh, to balance the negative uh, consequences of the lockdown. So once uh, they will resume school. So in fundamental school, uh, we have to know that uh, those uh, students who are at the university and uh, are learning to become a teacher, this. Uh, students uh, who anyway will have to make an internship, these uh, students from uni, they will be put in the fundamental school and they get even a um, contract with the state until the end of the ac academic year so that these students can help uh, with the pupils of primary school. So together with the regular teachers. And this is to help the students, uh, the pupils, to learn what they could not assimilate so far. In secondary schools, we are also to put in place uh, more support lessons. And we try to help students uh, to uh, 
to uh, to repass exams, to reset exams, and to have support uh, so as they can reset these exams. And that's for uh, pupils who feel uh, that um, they have not assimilated all the subject matters and where they need uh, uh, to do more progress. So that's the new measures that we create. So from next Monday on, we will have a sort of support classes that uh, we will offer through our helpline 8,002-1990. There will be, of course, uh, advice. There will also be psychological uh, support. There will be teachers available to help uh, work on an educational uh, problem that will not replace a uh, class, but it's um, an additional possibility if a student has the feeling that they have to know to go uh, more in-depth in uh, one matter. So that's for the usual helpline. So we want to create uh, a fairness for all students, as we believe it was maybe not possible during all these weeks. So at the end of the year, uh, should there uh, be some weeks left with normal school, uh, then we are optimistic then uh, that uh, the uh, pupils can uh, progress uh, a lot with these measures so that there will be more possibilities for the s s pupils to make sure that they have fair chances to succeed uh, in their school years. So now again, regarding orientations, uh, you know there is this uh, passage from uh, one uh, class to the other. So I speak about uh, the tests in cycle four. These tests are no longer possible, but that will not change the orientation pro procedure. So the teacher will look at uh, the normal uh, evaluations, the normal uh, statements of the year, and they can also uh, look at the psychological test. Then teachers will speak together uh, and with parents, and this, uh, this consultation uh, is working over the year. And should there be a lack of consent, then uh, there will be a commission. And this commission will be able to look at all these different elements and uh, take their responsibilities. So believe, we believe that these procedures can go on even should we continue in some kind of uh, lockdown, this could d be done uh, in a virtual way, except that we have not the results of the exams. So we are not worried about the orientation uh, decisions on uh, the fifth and fourth classes. Thanks to the measures that we have, that every pupil can uh, better their results by uh, suppressing one uh, mark. We believe that every student has the necessary uh, possibility to uh, be successful and choose uh, their future orientation. There are more details that we are going uh, to uh, hand over to the teachers and uh, to give to the parents so that they can be adapted uh, to the changed situations. So, of course, the usual uh, rules, we cannot use them. We have to uh, adapt them to this situation. So over the new next weeks, we are going to continue giving information uh, in different ways, 
even during the Easter break, we sent our newsletter to teachers and parents to inspire them, to show them the initiatives we take, to know uh, what can be done, what is interesting. So we are going uh, to fuel the sites uh, with uh, uh, appropriate contents. We are also uh, going to use this site, kana.lu, to provide our children with uh, interesting activities. Also, uh, National Yao Service, they will give some uh, uh, ideas for initiatives for the youngsters. So, SNG, they are going to lose launch some uh, competitions that you are going to find on this site, sng.lu. So please encourage uh, your children to participate in this. And we are going to be present with our helpline, 8002-1990, uh, to give, uh, uh, to give uh, psychological and uh, support if you have a question regarding a methodology, uh, if, um, subject matter, etc., just give a ring. Be you a student or an adult, if you feel that the situation is not mastered, uh, please uh, uh, search for some help, some professional help. And therefore, we have these psychologists that are available through this helpline. So uh, it is difficult uh, to forecast what will happen in the future. Therefore, we will have to uh, be flexible and adapt our measures and be in contact with all the players. And we try to make our best uh, to look at the criticism and uh, have uh, tips and uh, to uh, follow up on those. So every chain has a only the strength of one element of a, of a chain. And if we want to finish this academic year, we have to grow together, we have to, have to care for each other, we have to make sure uh, to uh, help each other, to care for each other, and to support each other. In this case, I will be optimistic that despite these uh, dire circumstances uh, that we live today, that we will be able to terminate this academic year uh, with success and that everybody has a fair chance to be successful. So uh, we owe it to the vulnerable people in this crisis uh, to help them. And in the same way, we have to make a large collective effort so that our uh, students will not have a sustainable uh, disadvantage following this crisis. So working together, we can achieve this. We have to know uh, that for whom we commit in these extreme circumstances. We should grow above, beyond uh, ourselves. Many people did this during the last three weeks, among them teachers, parents, students, beside them who are at the front in the healthcare service. So every, all these people do their best, and I'm sure they will continue to do so, because we know it's about our children, it's about our students, it's about our, uh, our future. So thanks to all these players. It sounds a bit weird, but I wish you a nice uh, Easter break, a very different one uh, that we know from the previous years. But uh, we should have uh, some nice moments. We should uh, relax, make the most of it. Maybe let's do 
what we uh, seldomly do during normal times. Let's take time for the children, for uh, the family, for ourselves. And, uh, you know, people, they made provisions in the shopping centers. So what we should do, let's do some provisions uh, in all our uh, love and contributions to our family. But I am sure there will be questions from the press. Thanks. Let me uh, continue the different questions that we received uh, from uh, the press. First question from Vox. We have already answered it, therefore I will immediately attend to the second question. How do you communicate? How do we communicate with uh, pupils from refugee camps who have little access uh, to internet connections? This is a challenge, of course. We have a department handling uh, the welcome structures of these uh, pupils. So this uh, uh, team, they work uh, to find a solution. So we know our children have some difficulties to make sure they have, uh, they are in good conditions uh, to be supervised. So we know that especially these young people m might have problems uh, lacking uh, the technological means in the refugee structures. But uh, we endeavor to be present in uh, these facilities and we try to make sure to put in place a technological uh, means and uh, trainings if necessary. But uh, we have very different circumstances here. M many of these uh, students go to school and so they uh, have the support of the, the schools. But what's important is actually uh, the uh, social follow-up. As a question from Vox, you answered it already partially, but maybe you could go give more details. Some parents of uh, fundamental school uh, children, they have not been in contact at all with the teacher, so did not answer their communications. As said, we have to transfer this message that school is going on. Even if uh, schools are physically closed, everybody has to get give feedback if they get an answer, a question from the teachers. If they do not do that, they actually uh, uh, break the law and they have uh, to know that there are consequences. So it's important to say this again to uh, transmit this message again. Some uh, teachers told us that this was the case during the first weeks. I don't know if it's continuing, but uh, the different school management has to uh, look at this. So sometimes we believe that uh, we have this uh, suspicion that when it was said that the uh, school would close two weeks, uh, then uh, we believe, we suspect that some people left the country. But we cannot confirm this because it's only a suspicion. But you have to know that it is an obligation, it is mandatory uh, to, uh, to uh, follow school. We know that it is difficult if you do not speak the language, if you have not an uh, appropriate framework at home to allow uh, the student uh, to be in appropriate conditions. We understand that. We try to find solutions out of the family, but we have no uh, comprehension if somebody does not collaborate. Next two questions from Passa Parola. You answered the first one already. I go over to the second. Do you have any news uh, regarding the universe, university agreements? So what is this vocational agreements? Uh, I do not really have an answer. We have to give these uh, questions, to address these questions to the university. I'm sure this find a, they find a solution to this uh, maybe detailed questions. They ha have a PR service to handle this. Next question from Luxembourg World. 
this uh, oral examinations regarding the uh, sixth form uh, exams. Yes, they are planned. And we uh, plan uh, them to take place. It's scheduled. We could imagine uh, that these uh, oral examinations could take place uh, remotely, but they will uh, uh, be passed as scheduled. Question from RTL today. Do you think about shortening uh, the summer holiday to compensate the lost time? So we believe that such a drastic measure will not be necessary uh, to allow students to have the national, the, the, the necessary uh, background. We believe that thanks to the commitment of uh, students, parents, and pupils, uh, we continue working uh, in e-learning and uh, provide a continuity. We don't know how many weeks we'll stay. Uh, we believe that during the last weeks, uh, uh, students uh, can uh, uh, can uh, do the necessary to uh, take up uh, and make progress and uh, uh, learn what is necessary so that I believe we should not need to uh, get to such measure. So I do not want to discuss uh, regarding uh, breaks, ho holidays for the moment. Two questions, RTL and Tageblatt. They are actually overlapping, therefore I just ask one question. What uh, amendments are for CDS, for instance? What happens if you do not have the necessary ECTS uh, points? Or if you lose a semester and have to study more? We are going to look at this and to follow this thoroughly. You can do a request to ask for a new scholarship, even if the university are closed. That does not mean that the semester cannot be concluded. Most universities help uh, and allow to sit exams and to get ECTS points. So we are in close contact with uni.lu to see what's the reaction. So, for instance, if a student wants to make an exam, uh, they have the possibility to do it. Should that not be the case, it will not be considered as a failure. The student uh, can reset the exam during the next semester. So, this uh, for CDS, CDS, there are rules on the duration, should there be any problem cases, we are f uh, going to find uh, adjustments if uh, on a case-per-case -case basis, and we find a solution. So we keep an eye on this, and uh, of course this is for uh, the Luxembourgish students, so students uh, abroad, uh, it's a bit different. We are going to discuss this uh, with the concerned persons and also with associations of students, and I'm sure we are going to find a way. Next two questions from Tageblatt. Will there re be uh, uh, consequences on the program uh, for the teachers in primary school, those who uh, will be recruited through a uh, different way. So I believe that the normal recruitment for teachers for primary school will be done in a normal way. They ask special questions, should we continue the lockdown? Uh, should it would not be possible for some candidates to do the exam, there will be an impact. But we are currently preparing the new school year. There are uh, school commissions and authorities who work together with schools. They prepare the schedule for 2020 and 21. So we will make sure that we have enough teachers and recruit enough of them. So uh, we did some survey to see if there would be a, a repercussion 
on uh, the teachers that are currently trained for the job, but and we believe there will be no problem that uh, the current students to be teachers, they will be able to finish their studies and be a candidate to be teacher and be recruited. And after this only, would we see if uh, there will be no uh, uh, vacations that we can fulfill with uh, teachers, then we will open uh, the vacancies to uh, persons coming from other backgrounds. So this is not a uh, question for the moment. Second question, in how far is it respected that there are teachers and students that are more vulnerable? Have they go to go? Have, do they need to go back before uh, summer? Should school start again? This is a question that uh, exists in many uh, domains. So uh, we have some sectors that are completely closed. Some sectors reopen again. We protect the vulnerable, the uh, sick person, uh, elderly, maybe young people who have a chronic disease. We are going to check this with our colleagues from the health service and we are going to put in place individual solutions, customized solutions. So now uh, for the moment, um, uh, we know that the virus is still present. Some people uh, fall in and some people in the school that, that work for school are ill and I hope there will be not uh, no major consequences on it. Question from Le Quotidien. That's un indirectly for you. This uh, leave uh, for family reasons, will it be uh, extended to 4th of May? Yes, it's not limited under uh, these conditions. Uh, now that uh, we extend this, it can be uh, extended until 4th of May. If there is a person, I uh, stress it, that have uh, persons who has no other solutions, uh, then this uh, leave for uh, uh, for family reasons, and it's a good instrument if there is no other solution. Question from RTL. For the uh, last year examination, so the six forms, do the, do, do the pupils have enough days to study before uh, they sit the exams? So this, this, mm, we have to know, uh, during the last years, we have been discussing with the students about the number of days that should be granted before the exams. And this year, they have lots of days to study. But what is important here is that there is a physical contact between uh, teachers and uh, pupils before school and the exam starts. Should there, should there be no contact between teachers and pupils, it's, uh, that would not be good. So even if the schools would s still be closed, we are going to organize a contact, but not a regular uh, class, not uh, would be make uh, mandatory. Question of Luxembourg Wirt. The communication between pupils, students, parents uh, is going through the platforms of uh, men. Many data is uh, uh, stocked there. How do you make sure that the data protection law is uh, implemented? You have to know that this platforms were not set up from one day to another. These platforms have been existing for some time, and many teachers and pupils did use them. But now, of course, there was an explosion. But these platforms are and were in conformity with uh, the data protection law. Two last questions from RTL. The main criticism from most school students is that uh, students get too much homework. Should this be limited? Previously, I clearly stressed that there are individual situations. 
which is too much uh, for one student because maybe there is no support at home or not enough support because parents work, because there are lots of children at home. And we have other, other conditions, other circumstances where uh, a pupil is alone with their parents who possibly do not work. These parents would probably believe that they should have more homework. Therefore, we have to look uh, at, uh, at this and make a sensible decision and show uh, understanding for individual situations. So I have uh, people around me who told me that there was too much homework. Some students uh, would work until 8 p.m. That was what I heard about it. But I always give the same answer. I say, tell the teachers about it. And I believe situation got to normal now. We have two worries. One, that the, uh, that the student has to work too much and the second is that uh, the uh, teacher is actually uh, actually under too much strain. And therefore, my message is let's uh, do things in a sensible way, in a reasonable way, under the present conditions, and then uh, we'll overcome the situation. Last question regarding the different uh, programs that are used, but there is one question emerging. Wouldn't it be possible to give the necessary technical uh, means, uh, for, for instance, giving a PC to each children? So, you know, would we have known one year ago that this would be the present situation, then we ha would have included in the 2020 budget uh, the necessary financial means uh, to uh, buy a PC for every student and that we would have made sure that they could have tested this weeks before. But here we are in a situation where it was decided on a Thursday evening that school should be closed on Monday. Uh, there were only kind of five, six uh, hours uh, available in class to get organized and schools tried their best uh, to give uh, PCs, uh, to give passports, and to make sure everything was working. Don't forget we are in the middle of a crisis, and we cannot aim at perfection here. We want to ask everybody uh, to do uh, the most, to give the, uh, the utmost, and this is uh, what is the case in uh, many fields. Some people spoke at the radio this morning and say we have only one single laptop at home and children fight about this one. And then they found a, a, a means because the mother went to, to the school and uh, got a second laptop handed over. So there are solutions to be implemented. So the best would be to make, uh, to get contact, uh, to get in contact with the school management. And so, uh, for instance, for primary schools, uh, the uh, communes are responsible and they are also happy to uh, give a PC to pupils when necessary. And the most of the time it's going on without any problem. Thank you.